Welcome back to another brisket experiment here on Barbecue and Bottles. Today, we're gonna to be experimenting whether it makes a difference whether you wrap in butcher's paper or whether you wrap in aluminum foil. So we'll be smoking these two briskets up on the pellet grill. And once we get about halfway through the cook, right as, as these briskets come out of the saw, we'll wrap one in butcher's paper, the other in aluminum foil, and then we'll do a taste test at the end and show you the difference. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick around. So as we were editing these videos, we realized just how long these brisket videos take. And we realized some of you might actually want to just skip to the finish and see the conclusions. So we've got this table of contents right here with some timestamps. So if you're one of those people that doesn't want to watch the full video, here you go. As with any brisket cook, the most important thing is starting early. It's 6 a.m. here and the most important thing with these brisket cooks is that you go low and slow and that you give them enough time for all that intermuscular tissue to break down and just result in a really tender, really juicy brisket. So the first step is we're just gonna get these guys trimmed up. Now we've got a boning knife. Now these boning knives are a big help when you're trimming your brisket. It just makes it a little bit easier as you're getting in and trimming off some of the pockets of fat that exist on these briskets. So I'll leave a link down in the description just to the one that we're using. You don't have to use it, but we would recommend that you use a boning knife. So our first thing for the trim is we're just gonna wanna take off any really hard fat because it won't render down through the cook. So we've got a thick slice here of hard fat. So we're just gonna trim this off see we're taking a lot of that fat off just so that we can perfect put that aside now with your trimmings keep those in a separate bowl if you grind your own burger chuck this is a perfect thing to use just to bring some really fatty beefy flavor to your burgers and this is a really really hard piece of white fat it's called the decal it's the fat that goes between the flat and the point and this is gonna be something that just won't render down through our cook. So we're gonna to wanna to get in there. And then for any flaps of beef like this, this is just gonna burn off in our cook. So we're just gonna trim these flaps down a little bit here just round off a brisket a little bit. Now you see here we've got another large chunk of really hard fat. So we're gonna wanna get in here as best we can. And again, this is where having a boning knife really helps. Now on the base of the brisket, this isn't the fat cap side, so we're gonna go ahead and trim this off. This is actually a little bit more fat than we see on the bottom of our briskets. And we're gonna be cooking these fat caps side down, so we don't need all that much fat on the top to protect our briskets through this cook because we've got that fat cap pointing down. All right, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just backyard barbecue, but we've got enough of this fat off to our liking at least. Now I'll flip this back over. Now for the fat cap here, we wanna make sure that we're leaving about a quarter inch thick of fat on the top and this is gonna help protect our brisket from the heat of the pellet smoker. So this will be going fat cap side down, and this will really act as the protective layer to prevent our brisket from drying out through the course of our cook. So we don't wanna trim this all the way off and down to the protein. All right, so we started off with a 13 pound brisket here, and you can see just the amount that we trimmed off. So don't be shy, take off as much fat or as much oxidized beef as you want, really just trim this to your preference. But you will end up with a significant amount of trimmings and don't worry about that. Now we're gonna get our second one ready here. Now I won't take you through the trim on this one, but this is just a great example of a brisket here. We've got the thick, fatty end of the brisket called the point, and then we've got the thinner end of the brisket called the flat. Now the point, this has so much intermuscular marbling that you really don't have to worry about overcooking it. It's the flat that you wanna watch out for. 
And so that's why as we're trimming, we're making sure that we're leaving at least a quarter inch of fat over top of the flat end of the brisket. That's the part of the brisket that you really want to protect through the course of your cook. Now when you're picking out your briskets, I'd really recommend looking for two things. One is you don't want any discoloration in the fat, so you want really nice white fat like we have here. If it starts to go yellow, it might just indicate that the brisket's been there hanging out in the refrigerator a little bit longer than you want. Second is you want as much intermuscular marbling, like just look at this. That's an incredible amount of marbling in this brisket. And that's going to just bring some really rich, beefy flavors to a cook. It's going to leave it nice and juicy, make it exceptionally tender. And so look for a solid amount of marbling in your briskets. And for the actual muscle tissue, you want to make sure that's really nice and vibrant red. And again, it'll just speak to the freshness of your brisket. So now we're just going to get our pellet grill turned on and warming up. Today we're going to be starting our cook at 225. Now let's check our pellet hopper. Now we've got this pretty much full. This will be good for the bulk of our cook. We might top it up at one point through here. But these pellets, the ones we're using, these are a maple bourbon pellet. And we just really like the flavor that that profile brings to the briskets. But you can, of course, use any pellets that you want. All right, next up here is just getting these guys seasoned up. So we're gonna use a coarse kosher salt and then we're gonna use ground black pepper as well. So we'll put descriptions down the link to the particular salt that we're using. We're not using fleur de sel or a sea salt. This kosher salt should absorb into the briskets relatively quickly. Now we're gonna go in with about a quarter cup of salt for each brisket. So we'll do a half cup total. This is a 50-50 ratio, so we'll use an equivalent amount of the black pepper. Now we'll get that all mixed up here. And this is really a Central Texas inspired rub where we're just going in with salt and pepper. Of course, you can add paprika, you can add brown sugar, you can you know, explore whatever rubs that you like to determine what flavor profile really meets your palate. But we just love brisket that's done in a Central Texas kind of way. All right, now that we've got that mixed up, you're gonna wanna season from up high so that you get a nice even coating over top of your whole brisket. Just like that. And these are huge cuts of beef. So again, don't be worried about over seasoning. Make sure you get the sides here as well. Now we're not using any binder and that's because we just trimmed these. So they're damp enough just from the moisture that was left on the brisket to be able to get the salt and pepper to adhere to that brisket. Now I'll flip it over and hit the other sides. You see when you season from up high like this, it just gives you a really nice even coating over top of the entire brisket. So we'd recommend either do this by hand if you have a shaker, that helps too. We're just keeping it simple today. Make sure you get the ends and just pat your rub in. But just look at the marbling in this brisket. Oh, I cannot wait. T minus 10 hours. The salvating's already starting. All right, and then just pull up your brisket. Try and get as much of that seasoning off the board as you can, and that'll really help get the sides of your brisket here too. That is just a textbook brisket right there. Look at that profile, trimmed up beautifully. That one's gonna cook up nice. Now we'll do the same thing over here. There we go. Now we'll just wait until our smoker gets up to temp, and then we'll drop these guys on. So that took about 10 minutes. So now we're gonna get our briskets on. And again, we're going in with the fat cap side down. Beauty, just like that. 
Now we're almost ready to let these briskets just ride for about two hours before we check in on them. But a couple of points I just want to point out here. First, you want to start with a clean layer of aluminum foil down there on the bottom on your grease traps. You don't want any residual grease from your last cook interfering with you know, potentially causing flare-ups or just causing issues through your cook. The second is make sure you always place your briskets over top of the grease traps. Now on this grill, all the grease will run down to a centralized trap system at this end of the grill. So you wanna make sure when you position your briskets that you're actually positioning them over the traps and that you're not gonna get any grease that will render down and potentially go into the fire pit and cause some of the grease fire on other brands of pellet grills that we've seen here. Now lastly, we've got some built-in temp probes here and we're gonna stick these into the actual flat part of the brisket. And you wanna make sure you're right in the center of that flat. Now, some people put it in the point. I prefer really monitoring the flat through my cooks. And that's because that's the more delicate part of the brisket. It has the higher likelihood of being overdone and dried out. So we really wanna know what, what is happening on the inside of the flat and the temperature on the inside of the flat. So with that, I think we're done here. We can close the lid down and let these briskets go for two hours before we come in with our first check. Now the last thing we're gonna prep for this cook is just our spritz. So we've got a regular spray bottle here. We've got a little bit of water in the bottom of it. And we're just gonna add an equivalent amount of apple cider vinegar. Now if you don't have apple cider vinegar, feel free to just go 100% water. We find that it adds a nice little flavor profile. So if you've got it, go for it. All right, now just get this on here tightened up. Now with this, we're just gonna spritz the brisket about every half hour to every 45 minutes. And this isn't a mandatory step. If you've got the time and you're just hanging out next to your brisket, go for it. But if you don't wanna spritz your briskets, you can skip this entirely. It's just an extra step if you're trying to take your barbecue to the next level. Now it's time to kick back, grab a cup of coffee, and just enjoy the rest of the morning. It's a little after seven o'clock and we've got about 10 hours ahead of us on this cook. Now we hope you're enjoying this video so far and if you are, consider hitting the like button below and leave a comment on what brisket experiment you wanna see. You know, do you wanna see hot and fast versus low and slow? Do you wanna see fat cap up versus fat cap down? You know, these are all cooks that we've got planned but if there's some other myth around smoking briskets that you want us to test out and see whether it actually makes a difference in your cook, just leave us a comment down below. So we're about an hour into our cook here. So we're gonna hit it with our first bit of spritz. The bark's actually just, you know, at the early stages of forming here. We're starting to get a bit of that rich mahogany color, but nothing really on the flats at all. It's just around the edges. We, we're going to want that rich mahogany color all over these briskets so the bark's got a long ways to go but we just want to keep it moist here with a little bit of our diluted apple cider vinegar. Right so we've got a really rich color this mahogany color that's starting to form on the briskets. The rub is really tacking up and sticking into the brisket here. You know, a little bit of it can still come off, but for the most part, when you rub it, it's sticking in. But we've got another, likely another two hours before we hit the stall here. And that's the point in time when we're gonna wanna wrap these guys. But in the meantime, you can see this is getting a little bit dry here. We don't have any pools of liquid forming on the briskets, which is great. So we're just gonna spritz them up a little bit more. All right, we'll close down the lid, give this another 45 minutes before our next spritz. And at the three hour mark here, we're also gonna give this a good little spritz. Oh, these briskets look incredible. Just look at these guys, like an absolutely beautiful rich mahogany color. 
the crust is really starting to form here. We're at an internal temp of about 140, 145 on both of these briskets. So we've got maybe another hour and a half before we're ready to wrap these guys. But this bark is coming along beautifully. All right, we're five hours into this cook. Both of these briskets have been humming at about 160 for the last half hour. So they're firmly in the stall. We're gonna wrap them right now. And again, we'll do one in butcher's paper and the other in aluminum foil. So now, to prep our butcher's paper, we're just gonna lay out two sheets of this on a picnic table. And we were just using regular butcher's paper for this. We're not using any waxed butcher paper, so that's an important distinction. The unwaxed butcher's paper will just let your brisket breathe a little more easily. Now we'll just overlap it a little bit like that. We've got a good length here, and now we're gonna go grab the brisket. We're just gonna place it down here, fat cap side down. This is just gorgeous, this crust here. Beautiful bark that's formed, really nice rich mahogany color. Now to wrap, just gonna come in like this, fold it over, fold it over again. So we're still fat cap side down, coming under the bottom, just like that. Fold this tightly in under the bottom as well, like that. And now we're ready to go, just like a little football. Now we'll get this back on the grill. And again, fat cap side down. And now we'll wrap our second brisket. So just like our butcher's paper, we've got two big pieces of tin foil here down, putting our brisket on this side. And then we'll wrap similar to what we did with the butcher's paper. Over twice like that. And then under with the excess. Perfect, just like that, fat cap down get this back on the grill. Now we'll get the brisket back on the grill. And again, fat cap side down, and we'll get the probes back in there. So we want the probes to go back into a similar place as we had before. So we're going into the flat, and we wanna get that in as close to the middle of the flat as we can. So we'll do the same over here. We've got the flat down this side. Get that in about halfway. Now we took these off at about 160, so we'll wanna make sure that where we put the temp probes, we're getting a similar reading, and that's how you make sure that you've got your temp probes in the right spot. So at this point, we're five hours into the cook, and the briskets have had five hours to absorb all that smoke flavor. So at this point, when we wrap them, we won't be getting any additional smoke flavor, and that's fine because Five hours is more than enough time that you need to get that smoke ring and the flavor associated with that. We've got a pretty good bark that's built up. And so now with them being wrapped, we're not gonna have to spritz or do anything for the rest of this cook. Now we just sit back, relax, and it's probably, you know, we've probably got another four hours on this before we're ready to take these briskets off the grill. We're looking for a temp in the flat of about 198 to 203. So once it starts to hit 195, 198, we'll be temp probing it just to check for a consistency and the level of doneness that we're doing. And I'll show you how to do that. But these are, are turning out great. Really pleased with the bark we've got on these. Smells incredible. You can still see the marbling. I think these are gonna be good cooks. And I'm anxious to see the difference between butcher's paper versus aluminum foil. All right, so we just had our first brisket hit 200. So we're gonna go in with our thermo pen here. And what we're gonna do is just see if it's probe tender. So we're gonna come in, we'll check a couple spots on the point here. Oh, uh, you know, there was a little resistance on that one. So we might let this go maybe another degree or two, but we're getting pretty close to this being done. Now we've just had Delilah, our taste tester, show up here. Now what she doesn't know is these briskets are gonna have to sit in the cooler for an hour or two, so she's a bit early. All right, we're at an internal of 201, and it's flipping back between that and 202. 
So now we're just gonna give it a bit of a bend test here and see if it's the right kind of consistency that we're looking for. So you can just feel it like this. It still has a nice amount of jiggle to it. It's tender. It's got that bend that we're looking for. So now let's get this transferred into the cooler. All right, we're gonna let that just rest there in the cooler for an hour to two hours while we finish out with the next brisket. So now you can see one of the main advantages of using foil over butcher's paper is just the speed at which the brisket cooks after you've wrapped it. Now we've wrapped these briskets around 12.30 and it's 2.30 right now. I thought this was gonna take four or five hours before we hit temp, but if you are in a rush, definitely consider wrapping in foil and there's a reason that they call this the Texas Crutch because if you're in a pinch for time or you're in a jam, wrap it with foil and you'll knock out your brisket really quickly. We've hit an internal temp here of 198. Now we've probed this and this is buttery soft. Now we're just gonna give it a good little feel here. Yeah, that guy's feeling about done. So now we're gonna move it over to the cooler. Get it down in the cooler. Now, if you don't have a cooler, you can just put these briskets in your oven. And again, we wanna let these briskets rest for about 30 to 90 minutes, maybe even two hours, because we've got a muscle here that's essentially the pack of the cow. So you've got the cow that's hunched over like this, and the brisket is this muscle here. So it's really tough, it does a lot of work, and that's why we've had to cook it low and slow for 10 hours to break down all that intermuscular tissue, render down the brisket, get it really nice and tender and juicy. And now you've got to let it just relax, just to allow the brisket to have the juices redistribute. Just let it relax before you slice into it. But now the waiting game begins. All right, we've had this last brisket resting for about 45 minutes. And the one before that has been in there for, gosh, probably about three hours at this point. But it's still nice and warm. It's the one that was wrapped in foil. Just look at that juice. There's an incredible amount of juice at the bottom of this cooler. And now we're gonna unwrap and see what's on the inside of these guys. Just look at that juice. Beautiful looking brisket. Now the bark on this is probably a little damper than we'd normally like, but that's just because of the foil. But beautiful mahogany color. Just look at that. We've still got some nice smoke in this guy and it is gonna be super moist. Now, let's try the butcher's paper. Oh man, this is gonna be incredible. And there is the butcher's paper. Now these guys look beautiful, and this is the moment we've all been waiting for. We're just gonna carve in and see how this turned out. So we've got the point on this side, the flat on this side. And what we're gonna do first off is just cut to separate the point from the flat. And that's roughly halfway through your brisket, maybe two thirds down the brisket. And you'll see this guy. And you'll see the flat running along the bottom the point running along the top, just incredibly juicy. Just look at that. Now we're just gonna carve off the tip here so that we can get access to the main brisket. We'll carve this into little pieces. You know what, I'm gonna take a little bite of that just to test how it's going. Mm, all right. Now, you wanna use one of these serrated knives We'll put a link down in the description below. This is the one that Aaron Franklin from Franklin Barbecue uses. Really cheap, really inexpensive. It's available on Amazon. And you're gonna to wanna to cut slices here that are about a pencil thick. All right, we'll just carve that off, leave that there. But I want you to just take a look at one of these pieces here. This is incredible. It's passing the bend test. Just look at that. It's a nice bend, but it's not breaking apart over your finger. But then when you pull it apart, it just tears 
easily like that with very little pressure applied. Now, we're just gonna move that to the side for a second. Now we'll cut into the point and we'll see how this turned out. Now look, because the grain runs the opposite way on the point, we turn it 90 degrees and we carve into it that way. And just look at this, absolutely beautiful. Nice smoke ring, a ton of rendering. You can see just the fattiness in the point. This is gonna be really, really tender to bite into. All right, we're gonna move this cutting board to the side for a second. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the foil wrapped brisket. So again, we'll cut to separate the flat from the point. And now we're gonna carve off this tip here. And we'll start slicing into the brisket. Now you can see, now you'll see the actual bark of the brisket here. It's a little bit more moist than the one with butcher's paper. And that's because it's, this is really just steamed away in the aluminum foil over the rest of the cook. And so we've really, we've broken down a bit of that bark that we worked so hard to build up. But as you can see, again, passing the bend test. Just look at that, really nice flops. I think they call this a clapper when you get it clapping like that. But anyway, nice smoke ring and it pulls apart fairly easily. Just look at that. Okay, now we're gonna go in for the point. Point just incredibly, incredibly well marbled. The juice coming out of this, beautiful. So there's only one thing left to do now and that is for the taste test. So a lot of you have been saying that I need to blind taste test or get someone else to do the taste test. So we've got a guest here to the show. You saw this guest when we did our pulled pork. So that's my nephew. So we're gonna go get my nephew here and he's gonna help us do the taste test and figure out which one of these is actually better. So we've got Cam here. We brought him in for the taste test. Now Cam, we're gonna do a bunch of taste tests here. First, we're gonna start off with this brisket. We're gonna have a little piece of the flat and then we're gonna have a little piece of the point. Okay, so try eating both of those and then I'm gonna do the same. So you're starting with the flat. Mmm. That's really nice and moist. Okay, now try the point. Done. Okay, Cam, so what did you think of that brisket? Was it okay? Yeah, pretty good. How was it compared to the brisket I made you last weekend? Um. Oh, a thumbs up. Okay, we got a thumbs up. Now just remember the taste of the flat and the point here. Now I'm gonna give you a little piece. Here, grab that, of that flat. And we're gonna give you a little piece of the point over here too, okay? So grab that. So now let's go in and we'll test this second brisket. Mmm. Pretty good. It just got a pretty good. So what do you think of that this one? This one's the good one. The first two pieces you had, were they better than the second two pieces you had? This one. Really? Okay, well, Cam's going for the foil wrapped brisket as the better brisket. And what I do agree with him on is that this one definitely is more tender and it does taste a little more moist. I think that might have, have something to do with the fact that it was in the cooler for three hours while we were waiting for the butcher wrap paper to catch up. So that, at least from a taste perspective, seems to be winning. Now, from an overall bark perspective, butcher's paper definitely won. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna give this cook, I'm gonna call it a tie. My personal preference is the butcher's paper. Cam's is this one over here. And I think it's because, from my perspective, I really like the bark on this one. And again, I think had we done this a little bit longer, left it in the cooler a little bit longer to line up with the length of time this had in the cooler, we'd have a, a better outcome. Anyway, so if you like this video, and give subscribe. it the-
thumbs up, subscribe, you heard it here over here. And if you want to see Cam on another video, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Hey, Delilah. All right, Delilah. Which one do you want? Oh.